Um, so now we move on to the actual framework which allows the um, KDE applications to be built. So this is something else that's slightly different to GNOME um, and all the other desktop environments is that they state that it can be installed either into use or into opt and the BLFS editors recommend the latter. Um, certainly when I used to run LFS as my main distribution um, I always used to install KDE into the op optional directory and it was quite self-contained it was easy easy to upgrade um, every time there was a new release you could just download the, the packages and rebuild it and put it in the new directory um, so I thoroughly recommend it um, rather than using the user uh, location which would just embed all the files uh, in amongst all the other um, binaries that are on the system or binaries and libraries and all the other shared files and so on. So um, let's have a look at this installing into user. So we'll skip that. We want to install into opt. So we use this export. So if you're not installing it, you need to make some additional configuration changes. Best practices to add those to your system. Or personal profile. So we need to become root user to do this. So let's become proper root. And you'll see it creates this K5 prefix as part of this profile anyway. and make some changes to the LDSO comp so the KF5 libraries can be loaded. So I'm just, because we haven't got the KF5 variable yet, what I'm going to do is just source etc profile to take those changes. So now we should have the KF5 prefix, which we have. And it says several KDE frameworks, five packages installed into debus directories. So you can see this it's using this prefix now. So we that's why I just want to make sure and, and source the ETC profile to make sure that this worked. So you can see it's actually using the opt K K5, it's created the, these directories. Some packages may also install icons in a high color set, so we can run these as well. Sometimes the installation paths are hard coded into installation files. This is the reason why opt KF5 is used as an installation prefix instead of opt KF5, etc. After installing KDE frameworks, you may wish to rename the directory and create a sim link, so we'll do that. And it says there. Uh, how to switch it back again and install the new version and then recreate the sim link. So it does make things a lot easier. So hopefully they've put that tip later on. I'll leave it open in case they haven't. Um, and I'll highlight that to remind us that's what we need to do. So building the frameworks, let's come back out of this. Um, and before I carry on, I'll resource the profile for my user to make sure that, let's see if I've still got the KF5 prefix, yep, it's there. So it looks like we've got all these dependencies here. The only extra thing we need is some oxygen fonts and some noto fonts. And there's a few other options outside of the BLFS book. Now the noto fonts, they're off the book, but they're worth downloading. Um, there is 
yeah, one package download all the fonts. I think that's quite a good idea because you get a lot of foreign fonts, which, although you might not be able to read those fonts, you know, scripts and so on, um, if they do appear on screen, at least you can see it's a foreign language rather than just boxes or or hex codes or something, um, which are just meaningless. But at least you can see it's some sort of script, some sort of uh, other language that you can't read. Um, it makes sense to have all of these. So I'm going to save this. As you can see, it's a, a gigabyte inside, so it's going to take a little while to download. Five minutes or so. So I'll just wait for those to download. In fact, while they're downloading, I'll download the oxygen fonts as well.
Okay, so those fonts have down, finished downloading. I don't think there's anything else. If you just want certain ones, you can download the inventory ones, as you can see here. But I would say it's, it's, I think it's a good idea to have the foreign languages available as well, if you're using that font anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all is to move the oh it's capital N Noto fonts to the parent directory. I'm going to create a Noto directory because I'm not sure how this will unpack and then unzip the fonts. Okay, let's see what we've got. Got lots of fonts. So I'm glad I created a separate directory to contain all these. And there was a README, so let's have a quick read of the README. So it just tells you what the package is all about. Um, let's see, I'm going to get the file browser up to look at this directory to see um, how do I go, I don't understand how to use this uh, I'll go to the root Not sure how to use this one. Let's try this edit. Um, yeah, I think this is one of the things that frustrated me was no, I just don't know. It doesn't seem to behave. As you'd expect. Home, locations. I can't find a way of selecting the root directory. <coughs> Let's search for the root then. Uh, okay, such a noto. No. Right, okay, let's try. Into this in the root. There you go. So, um, what I was hoping to do was to go to the. BLFS directory, uh, sorry, in the sources, BLFS, and go to the Noto directory that I created. Oops. Pick up the scroll bar. Uh, Noto. Maybe what I should have done actually would have been simpler is to run Nautilus with the current directory. That's better. I just want to see if there's any other file types here. Uh, that's better. No, they are all TTF files and the license file. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. So now I need a reminder of how to install these fonts. I think I don't do this often enough to remember. Yeah, this is it. 
just need to install them. So if we do this, and call them Noto, so create a directory called Noto. And then install all the TTF fonts into Noto, but they're all in the current directory, so we can get rid of that directory there with sudo minus e. That's better. And then we just run this font config cache file on the Noto directory and again as the root invalid cache file Have a look at that. Well, there's a few there. Um, let's try running on fonts. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove those invalid cache files. So let's do all at once. And then I'm going to List the fonts there. Oh, it's the FC cache. Oh, I should be running it as the root user, I see. Okay, so I shouldn't be sudoing really because it's probably retaining the fact that I'm actually becoming the root from. A normal user, so I'll become the root and I'll go into user share fonts. And I'm not sure the way of doing this whether I can do user share fonts or whether to do it like it says here individually. So, what I'm going to do is just run. A quick script to go through each of these for um, f in stars. So that's every directory in this directory here. Do this command here. Dollar f. So it should run the cache for each of these directories, hopefully. So that looks okay. So it's found one font in there. Cantorel has found four fonts. Charis SIL has found four. 22 for Deja Vu, Dulos it's found one, Gentium Plus it's found two. Um, 
All right, it says existing cash is valid. So it looks like it was these four fonts here that were the, the cash that I deleted. And it's probably because I ran them as, as root and the sudo wasn't the, the real root. So that's why it was failing. Yeah, it's, that's okay. So that's much better now. So they're installed. So let's go back. I can remove this directory. I'm going to be running out of this space now with that gigabyte file. Yeah, down to 13 gig. Um, so the next one I need to look at is the oxygen fonts. So let's get rid of that. Um, is this just one chapter, is it? TTF and OTF fonts, yeah. Okay, I'll just click on that to change the colour. So oxygen fonts, and it says these fonts are only supplies a source needing CMake and FontForge to create the TTF files. But for a while the source has always in, also included the prepared TTF. So I don't suppose there's any instructions for creating, no. This, the TTS from source, we could try to do that by installing FontForge and creating them. Um, so let's have a go at that just to make this installation of Beyond Linux from scratch even more um, more like a built from source rather than using what's been given to us. Let's see if that's possible. So let's download FontForge. And extract it. Okay, they've done something with the directories again. Yep, it's just the version number straight away. So we've got all the requirements that are within the BLFS book. And we'll just take the defaults. Okay, let's check that installation. Okay, all those tests passed, and let's run the install. And that's complete. So let's just tick that one off, chapter 41. Forge. So let's now, did I move this file? No. Let's move Font Forge to the parent and move 
oxygen fonts to the parent as well. Uh, yes, I will, because these fonts will be available from anywhere. I think, I think that's right. And time dependency. Yeah, I'll stick them in the parent. And then extract them. So we've got a README and some licensing stuff. So let's start with the README. So now it's testing. Didn't say how to build it. So we need to use CMake. I don't know how to use CMake actually, so I might thought there might be some instructions. Um, now we have I've seen this L command being used. Um, what we can do is go here, do download with the manual on single page and look for CMake and try and find some commands we can copy. So let's try this CMake minus L command. No source or binary directory. All oh, right, okay, they always build it in a separate one. So let's try that first of all. Um, actually, I've had an even better idea. Um, Things they said they used to, they've only recently been installing the um, uh, packaging the TTF files. I wonder if an older version of BLFS will have the instructions we need to build this. <coughs> um, so let's go back to download museum. Oh, that's really old. Um, directory listings available. So if we go up and say let's go back to version 8. And then go to... Right, all these are compressed, we'll have to read the page that comes down as one single lump. So let's look for oxygen fonts. Uh, 
Okay, so that one is still packaged back then. So let's try version. The earliest version 7 is from 7 years ago. Let's try that one. Let's wait for the page to load. Oxygen. Font. That's interesting. It's not finding it now. I think that's interesting. Let's look for fonts. Uh, was it under X, Xorg, wasn't it? Xorg fonts. This looks like it's their own font, so this may have gone back too far now. Let's try, that was 2013, the latest that was 2017, let's try 7.6 at the end of 2014. It's all font still. Doesn't look like the oxygen fonts are in here. No. Let's try seven dot eight. Right, they are here. Oxygen fonts. Alright, that takes us to an external page. Alright, that's because it's got KF5 dependencies. I was wondering if this Oxygen fonts has been laid out since they've started building KD, KD Frameworks 5. Um, So I still haven't got a separate fonts directory there. Alright, so let's go to seven dot nine. Oxygen fonts have got it as a separate entry here. Yes, there we go. So they did used to have instructions to build it. So let's extract the fonts. Um, you can see there's one, two, three TTF files that have been created, uh, or packaged rather, so let's just see the date and time of them. So it's November the 5th, 2015 that was created. So let's run the commands I've got there. Oh, right, okay. Might help if I went into the source. Try that again. That seems to have worked. So now let's list. The 
directory, which will be up one. Right, it's not built it because they're there probably. So let's remove that. Maybe this is why they don't build them anymore, it's just a pointless exercise. I'll rerun the build command. No, it hasn't rebuilt it. That's strange. Maybe all this does is just copy the files. Um, so let's just begin from the beginning. And I'll actually do the install now. So let's see what it's done. So it's installed. So let's put them under true type oxygen. Okay, does it say what to do here? No, it doesn't. Tells you what to do in Noto fonts here as well. Oh, it looks like they should go under Noto actually. Uh, I'm sorry, under True Type. I guess that makes sense because they are True Type fonts. Um, I'm going to leave them where they are for the moment though. But in theory, all we need to do now, if we can get rid of that is to rerun this fc cache command which I'll do as root and run that on the true type oxygen folder Three fonts. So that looks like that's all there is to it then. Oh. Okay, so now we can build the frameworks. And as you can see, it's a um, automated deployment because there's loads of individual files and they're all built the same. So it's similar to what we did for Xorg and I think one or two other packages. So let's fetch them. And as you can see, it says the order is important, obviously because of dependencies. So we can copy all of this. And you notice some have been um, remmed out with a little hash uh, command there. So, for example, extra CMake modules have already we've already installed that. And a few others like Modem Manager Qt and so on. It explains here why. It's already been cut out because it's built earlier. The icon package is covered separately in Breeze icons and Oxygen icons. Modem Manager QT package may be built if its optional dependencies is installed and so on. So we could build Breeze icons. Let's download that while the rest is downloading. Um, yeah, this is going into KD5. 
Oh right, of course it would have already downloaded it because it was in the. Uh, it's in this download bit. So it's downloading all the files in this frameworks. So all we need to do is build this. If I open a new tab. Go into the um, KD5 directory, extract, breeze icons, and build it. And Install so again in theory I can go into the root and run that FC cache command. V slash uh, oh these are icons sorry not fonts I'm getting confused here so that's the breeze icons installed that's under chapter 28 and tidy up and move that means it's not part of the KDE chapter even though arguably it is part of KDE I'll move that into the parent directory and come out of here and yep that's all downloaded So let's now get rid of that tab. Let's paste this in. So this is just like a steering file, which this script here, well, this one down here will use. So this is our function to become root without having to be prompted. Um, if installing an opt and there is an existing opt KF5 others record directory or symbolic link, it should be reinitialized as root. So if there isn't an existing opt KF5. So start a subshell. And then this script is the one that will be steered by that steering file. And it will check the MD5 sums and so on, extract each one. So let's paste that in and just wait for these packages to build now.
Okay, so those have finished installing. There's obviously no errors. So we can um, yeah, it's exited there at the end. So the only thing we need to do is to do this bit here that they mentioned after installing KDE frame, Frameworks to move to a version directory with a link. Um, uh, to an unversion directory. So it will just become root and just and run this in. So if we look at opt, you can see we've got. QT5, which is where we actually installed, that was the version directory, but that's been renamed from QT5, sorry, QT5, yes, to QT5141, and now we've got the link pointing at the version directory. So that's that installed.